Hi, 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 hi. Welcome to Jofido International. And what does Jofido International represent? It's about, you know, empowering your mind. So, why are we so keen on empowering your mind? Your mind is the place where everything in your life happens. This is where everything starts. This is where life starts for you. So if your mind is not developed, if your mind is not enriched, if your mind is not empowered, your life starts to fall apart. And when life starts to fall apart, it is hard to get it back. So it is best for you to start growing your mind, developing it, putting knowledge in there, so you can make the best of who you are. And so today, my name is John Fido and I'm coming to you live on Instagram and I'm coming to you on YouTube to share with you one of my biggest messages. This message is so amazing because um, what I tend to do is I tend to, hi, hi, hello, everyone saying hi. Thank you for, for, for switching on or getting on board. We're gonna learn something amazing today. What happens is when I start searching for knowledge, I want to know what is behind what happens. And once you can get the answer, you know the Bible says knowledge is power. And it says my, my children or my people suffer for lack of knowledge. That's where our big problem is. And that's why I've taken it upon myself as one of my mission to get to understand what is happening in our minds. What is holding us down? Why are we not growing like other people are growing? So the topic today is know who you are. That's the topic, know who you are. And it is so important that we know who we are because without knowing who you are, you don't even know where you're going. Okay, so I'm, I'm videoing this for YouTube. So most times you'll be seeing that I'm not looking at you, but I am actually here with you. So, you know, once we finish the video, you can go on YouTube and get the full version. But if you're on, on with us now live, it's okay. You get a, a first batch of it, and then maybe if we if the battery dies and all, so we finish and stop the Instagram part, you can see the rest of it on YouTube. So know who you are is a big message that has come to me. Now, have you ever been in a position where people make you feel inferior? Have you ever seen yourself um, feel that you're not good enough for people? You know, you have friends and somehow you feel, you feel uncomfortable in their midst because somehow somewhere in your head you feel you don't belong to this group. Or have you ever been, you know, left behind in something you wanted to do you know or ignored or made to feel so small now these are some of the things that are happening in our lives these are some of the things that we're experiencing now what why why is this so important this is the thing that is making people not able to fulfill who they are because you're going to find you know especially for us black people um, people are gonna say oh yeah now you bring the you you want to present the race card but I can tell you that I have been in all these situations I've been in this country now maybe 25 26 years and you still struggle to feel completely part of the system I'm not I'm not sharing this message with you because I feel negative about it no I don't feel negative because it's something that I've learned to understand and this is why it took me time to try and get to grips with this. Know who you are is so important. Now, I read a lot of books and I started wondering, is there, is there something different from the mentality of the black person, from the other races? Is there something not right about us? Now, I tell you a little story which is quite interesting. Um, I'm, I'm taking a trip to China and Normally, I've been in China. I've been in China three times now already. And, you know, just for me, it was to familiarize myself with the setting there to get into business, to try and understand what they're doing. Because trust me, China is one of those countries that's got so much to offer. And, you know, all these things we have in the West, 
when you start looking more and more into the business um i i did i did a topic on that in our dvd package where i talked about the business itself because i've been to china several times and we let's talk about hair now for instance everything that happens in hair comes from china um you would notice that hair comes from india but the hair is coming from india to china and because look at china's population we're talking one billion people in a country and what they do is they have labor 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 is so much one of the biggest resource any country could have is human resource and human resource being you and i we are the ones that sit behind the scenes and make things happen we are like one of the greatest gifts that god could put on earth but what happens people mess around with our brain mess around with us and then we leave this earth you know i've got so many relatives that come and gone we live without contributing we live without being anything and that's caused by humans but okay so i'm taking this trip to china and suddenly chinese embassy now have been three times you now have to go and go you know for an interview i've never been for an interview before and now they finger fingerprint you left hand right hand picture eyes why is that happening because now china has found its importance in the world now remember i'm studying tourism and i know what tourism means to every country countries make so much money from tourism how do they do it you carry yourself from your country you carry all the money you've earned from working and no oh gosh i need a break and i really want to go and splash out i have this money and so you take that money with you to that country and you do all your shopping and you do all your you know traveling and sightseeing and you know going to museums and learning about you know you paying the taxi you paying the restaurant you paying for the food you paying um for the clothes and you know the visits and and so your money is spent there so what that means is you have taken your money to enrich that country so any country that has sense is looking into tourism to develop their country now generally what most countries do is they they, they make their own products and they export it so you can make products and send it to england for instance or to ireland or to america and then that country pays you but with tourism you don't need to do that with tourism the people go over to that country and spend the money and they see and the same foreign exchange so china has found that out and now china is now standing tall china is chatting with america hand on hand and you know trump will say this and the chinese government will say that and everyone's fighting but you know the rest of the world look at africa one billion people and we have countries nigeria for instance where i come from they're not even thinking about anything they're still fighting over politics they're still fighting over the oil and the ground that we don't even refine other people come there refine it and they send it back to us but why is this happening that's the question i'm asking us that's what i've been trying to find out what is wrong with our thinking because we've been through you know yes everybody says, oh yeah black people would like to hide on uh, this uh, uh slavery thing and 400 years of being slaves but you see this slavery wasn't just 400 years of being slaves because if that was the case when slavery ended why hasn't everything ended why is our life still messed up why do we still feel inferior in places why do people still look at you and they pick on your accent and they go oh yeah why do you speak in that way why do people look at you and say why are you dressed that way why do people look at you and wonder why your hair is coily or nappy as some people will call it why why do people pick on the black person you know there was even a, a pro a, I remember one time was either on the internet or in the newspaper and black women are the are the ugliest why because this is all mental war this is all aimed at making you feel inferior this is all meant at stopping you from developing from growing and that's why i'm asking the question or not the question that's why i'm trying to share this knowledge with all of us know who you are 
We are not our color. We are not our hair. We are not, you know, our accent. We are not the country we come from. Because look at one of the things happening right now. Okay, you know, like with the U.S. right now, Mr. Trump, President Trump, has this whole issue about his building this wall in Mexico, you know, between Mexico and the U.S. and he doesn't want Mexico to, to Mexicans to travel to U.S. Then he blocked, I think, seven or six countries you cannot visit the U.S. I visited the U.S. Um, when was it? In, in May, because my niece was getting married. And I go to the U.S. all the time, and trust me, I love the U.S., but when I look at tourism, the thing I'm studying and trying to see what the world is talking about, nobody will actually go buying tickets and say, I'm going to the U.S. just for tourism. If you haven't got family, if you haven't got some ties that makes you want to come there. And Donald Trump hasn't made it any easier by blocking countries. Because what people are looking for in tourism right now, remember how I explained how people take their money and go and spend in a country. They want people that are welcoming. They want people that want to, you know, interact with you. They want people that appreciate the fact that you have spent your money, your heart and money on them. Then they give you value for your money. They don't want people that look at you and start wondering what are you doing here. Because that's the image that the U.S. gives. So, now, when this is happening and, you know, it's given this psychological image to Mexico, you know, you're not good enough, so don't come into our country. How do you think they feel? It's not encouraging. And now that's the same thing that's happening with Africa. Every day you're hearing migrant ship, migrant ship, migrant ship. Migrants are traveling from Africa. And I've heard people tell me all types. Oh yeah, and then they were coming through Senegal and they came through Dakar and then they ended up in Libya and now they ended up in Spain. And it's like, why are Africans all trying to get across to the West? beats me because the African continent is not developing now this is just a natural human tendency we all look at the animals just look at the animals in the forest if they find the grass in that area is not green enough the animals will migrate they will move on to where there is green grass so this is nature this is normal. So let nobody sit out there and think that because Africans are getting on the migrant ship, that's the worst thing that ever happened. Now, if the world really cared, they will find a way to talk to the African leaders. But I know it is more than that. Because the African leaders take all this money. They, they take the raw cash. I know of a leader in Nigeria, Sania Bacha, and the amount of money this man stole and sent to Switzerland and locked it up there, and he died and the money was left in Switzerland. And when Nigerian, Nigerian government then came and said, we want our money back, it was a hassle. It took years and years before they released the money, and when they did, the present government claims to be sharing the money to the poor, but we know the same old story. So, when this happens, what do you think happens to the mindset of the people who live in that country? This is where know who you are comes in. Because it is not the country you come from that makes who you are. The political scenario, what the West has done to the, you know, to the Africans, all the slavery nonsense, all the nonsense that's been going on in this world, look at the amount of stress going on all over the place. I'm sitting there, I'm looking at this Chinese person behind the counter and asking me, because I've been th three times, right? Oh, um, what are you going to do in China? Why are you asking me that? For, for tourism's sake, I need to visit your country and see what your country is like and I'm taking my money there. You should be happy I'm coming over. But you know what? It beats me right now. I have no understanding of why China has decided to become very strict with their uh, tourism. But I probably think is the issue going on with America and them, and so they're taking it out on the rest of the world. I don't know. But this is a scenario that is going on. Now, you, you sit behind that counter, and the other person sits this way, and you suddenly feel you're superior to that person. 
And when we allow things like this to happen, our mindset starts to go funny. We start to belittle ourselves. We start to think that we're not good enough. We start to break down. We start to wonder what next. But this is where I want us to change our thinking. This is where I want us to see life from another angle. And in another video we just did, it was about you empowering your mind. It was about you taking on knowledge. So the knowledge you put in you will start helping you to understand who you are. And who you are, like I've just explained, is more than your skin color, is more than your hair texture, is more than your accent, is more than your beauty, is more than the fashionable clothes. You know, when people get, get you, you know, this happens to us again as, as a race. Because we, we think people don't appreciate us for who we are. We tend to overcompensate sometimes. And you see, the few of us who then find money or have money, you know, like when they do it wrongly, when they go stealing their government's money, like the, what happened with um, Mugabe in uh, 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 Zimbabwe. And his wife, they called her Gucci Grace. What was Gucci, what was Gucci got to do with a person because she only wore designer clothes now for somebody who is in that position and you are causing so much poverty in your country and you are not encouraging your citizens to grow and you are not supporting the women there so they become somebody as well then you take all that money and you start dressing yourself up in uh, uh, you know brands it has to be branded Gucci Grace over compensation because we cannot contribute more to life to help the people that are behind us to grow as well. I mean, I did I did a thesis on Qatar in my course, and Qatar is quite a young country. This country is only like two million people in that country. But I saw the last time when I was doing my research, Qatar is like the richest country in the world. The little, I, I won't call it little, but the money they have, they're giving it around. Everyone is being grown. And one of the things they consider for a country that can be called developed, it's, it's human resource. What is human resource? Human resource is when you grow people, when you grow people, when you invest in people, when you educate your people, when your people can provide for themselves. Now, this is an interesting thing that we need to know. Why is it so important? The human brain, um, which I just explained in the other video, um, the one about reading books, the human brain can create anything. Remember the Bible said, God created us in his own image. That's in Genesis. It's one of the biggest messages I want everybody to remind themselves of. God created us in his image. So look at yourself and know, just know, because this is something they want to hide from all of us. Know that you are a part of God. And this is what I tell my children every day. Do not let anyone come and touch your brain and try to make you feel that something is not right with you. Because you are complete. God created you in his image. And so, if you have been created in the image of God, where is the problem? He created all of us in his image. And so, this is what we need to put in our understanding right now and start to work with it. So, human resource, you invest in your people. When you invest in your people, they're going to be able to create things in that country. They're going to be able to use their knowledge to change things. Now, right now, what Qatar is doing, remember I said Qatar is investing so much in their human races. Qatar only has to import workers right now. Every, when you really look at Qatar's population, is about 300,000 to 500,000 people, and the rest are imported labor. People from all over the world coming over to work in Qatar. So now this country knows that if it wants to be able to take 
control of his own resources. He needs his own people to have those skills. So, of course, one of the things that I said in my thesis or my, my, my paper was, they have choices. They either could have the imported labor become citizens of that country and hope that they believe and trust and love the country and continue to contribute, or well, carry on with what they're doing, which is start to homegrown their own people. But you see, that's the problem with African countries. We don't get that message. We don't get that message of growing our own. And while we were looking at slavery as well, the black, black, you know, those of us black people, rest of the world, America included, you hear all these stories of police brutality, you hearing things that are happening there, you hearing all this happening to us. We don't get the message that we need to develop us first. Because if we don't start to improve our life, no one, and I mean no one, no one out there is going to come and change your life for you. It only has to come from you. You are the one who ha you are the one who has to decide. I want to change my life. And there's a big message that, well, for those of you in America, I don't know how I can guide on that because it's just like those of us here in the UK, with all the racism that's going on, with all the craziness going on. You have to take it upon yourself to say, I want to improve on my life, and I'm taking that on. And I buy all these books and I read and I know the things that I want. And I know, I know clearly what I want because I know that I'm a part of God and I know that God has use for me. So God has a message for you. God has sent you here for a reason. You are not to be used by anyone. So once you understand that, what you need to do now is improving yourself. You're in America. Improving yourself. You're in the UK, improving yourself. You're in Europe, improving yourself, being a black person. Do not sit down there and say, they haven't given me. No one's going to give you. Because that's the plan. The plan is to make you feel, you remember when I started, have you ever been made feel small? Have you made, ever been made feel inferior? Do you get that feeling people are ignoring you or letting you down or you are number one on the list to be sacked? Yes, that's the plan. The plan is for you not to believe in yourself and you lose who you are. You lose that part of God in you. But if you start empowering yourself, if you start taking on knowledge, where the Bible said, I always love to go back to the Bible because that's our spirit. That's who we are. Bible says knowledge is power. And I believe clearly then once you take on knowledge, you begin to understand what the world represents. Once you take on knowledge, you will see things differently. You will hear things differently. You will have great ideas that you can improve on. You will know what to do with your life. You're not going to sit down and be waiting for people to, to, to dictate to you, to tell you what to do. Because this is where it is. There's a movie I watched. I think it's called Get Out. I'm waving back. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And Get Out was all about, again, the black people and the other races. And they want to use you because they know that God, God is so kind to the black man. I'm telling you. God loves us. God loves us so much. You hear black don't crack. The black jeans. The, you know. I've watched so many things and there's, there's, there's a set of books I've just ordered. It's coming from the States. And this man opened my knowledge. He says, whenever black is dropped in anything, what then happens? Black takes over. It is such a color that it's so unique. That is God's love. And when you, when you look into Africa, where I come from, I see the love of God everywhere. God loves Africa because there's nothing that Africa lacks. Africa has gold, um, uh, 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 diamond, oil. Talk about fruit trees. Talk about, you just talk about anything that nature could give and God put it in that continent. But where is the problem? 
the problem comes from us we are the problem i mean there was there was a cd i was listening to the other day and the man was given this story it, it, this story goes like this he says there was a pastor who a preacher who was going around you know normally he goes through the um he goes from village to village or cities to city preaching and so he came across this uh, you know village uh, this home in a, co a country home and when he saw this place the garden there was amazing he'd never seen any garden like this it was beautiful well manicured lawns and flowers everywhere and trees growing you know tree lined all nicely manicured and set up beautiful beyond imagination and he couldn't help himself and he stopped and he was admiring the beauty of this piece of land and while he was doing that the the the, the owner of the land came in his tractor and saw him and said and then came down from his tractor and said oh hello how are you and then he goes oh my goodness i have never seen any farm like this before do you know God loves you? God has blessed you with this amazing place. And the, the man said to him, the farmer said to him, Yes, I appreciate God's work. And I thank him for the seeds and everything. But you should have seen this place when God had it all to himself. And that was an amazing story. Because that message comes down to all of us we are like every piece of land that needs to be tilled that needs to be farmed that needs to be you know manicured and taken care of just look across everywhere else there are pieces of land everywhere but this man was busy working on his piece of land he did all that physical work and that's where god helps those who help themselves because if he did not take his time to manicure that place and do all that work, would the trees have grown? Would the plants have grown? I mean, the, the, this, this happened even to my sister. My sister visited her and she had this really beautiful little piece of land. And I was trying to help out. So she, she gave me all the you know tools and said, okay, you want to go help in the garden? Go ahead. And I got there and I tell you the land was dry and hard. I couldn't even... I couldn't even get the shovel in and she said yeah that's the land we have here but by the time I'm done with it because she does it she gets the husband she gets it so you know the sons they all come and help and they rake it and till they pull out the soil and aerate it and then they get manure and they put it all in and she said by the time I'm done you should see the fruits that come out of this land little piece of land I said I wish I was with you I would have taken videos of this and she said that's what I tell everybody. It is not the land itself that will do the job. You have to put your effort in. And she was telling me that even way back in Nigeria, you know, we have land everywhere. But of course, our people, we don't see the value of it. What is that? We want to go to the market and buy what's been sold. When this land dry all around your house, we don't want to get, we don't want to get our hands dirty. And that is the situation with all of us. It's what you put in that comes out. Bible says it too. It says you reap what you sow. That is such a typical, you know, a, a verbal interpretation. Like when she puts the seeds in, what comes out is what she put in. And it is the love of watering the plants. That's what happened to the farmer that the, past, the preacher saw. And when the preacher finished with him, he said, I got your message. I'm going to go to church and preach this today. Because that's the problem we have. But especially, you know, mostly the African countries. I tell you, I was telling my sister the other day, they, they sleep in church. Our people sleep in church. 24-7, Monday they're in church, Tuesday they're in church, Wednesday they're in church. Every day they're in church, my, my tailor, my, my young girlfriend that, you know, does all my sewing. When I come around, I think on Wednesdays or Thursdays, she's not there. I mean, she's in church. Nothing is wrong with going to church. Nothing is wrong with going to church. God walked six days. Six days, go to Genesis. One, two, day one, he was doing this. Day two, he was doing that. Day three, I counted the days, six days. And then on the seventh day, he rested. Now, 
God made us in his image. If we are the image of God, did we see our God sit down idle, do nothing? Did we see that? Our God was busy at work, creating things so that we can enjoy it. So why can we create things? Then he rested for one day. And then he created us. Do you remember when he created us? What did he tell us to do? Go ye and multiply. Go ye and dominate the earth. Take authority over the earth. What do we do as a race? Now because in our head we've been confused not to know who we are. So we just sit down and do nothing and we wait for other people to do it. Then we, then we get angry and then we, and then we moan. We need to wake up from that. We really need to wake up from that and realize who we are. And realize that we are a piece of God. We are a part of God. He created us in his image. And then he works every day to provide for us. And he told us to go and continue his work. He told us to go and make his work stand out. That's the mission we've been sent on. To go and continue this work. Not to stop. And because each time we're contributing or doing something, we're helping to create a better world. So me sharing with this message with you is to help create a better world too because now you've got this message, you can take it on too. You can share it with your children. You can share it with your friends. We can all create a better world. Not a world that is full of anger, full of envy, full of hatred, full of depression. Because we can make things work for us. And so if, for instance, we took that message on, go ye and multiply, and we went to Africa, and we started using our knowledge to make changes in our country and continent, See how I've just explained to you about China. Today, China is sitting back and relaxing and asking people to sit down for an interview for you to visit China. It wasn't like that some years back. There was a time China went through a really difficult time. Now China is all over the world. They're in Nigeria, then all of Africa, China is practically taking it over. Why? Because we refuse to go and multiply. Because we're sitting and they're waiting for them to come and do it for us. They are in various African countries building uh, um, airports, building railways. Are they not human like you and I? Was it not the same God who created a piece, you know, took a piece of him and created them just like he created us? Is that not the same message if we are reading the Bible that we should be having and you know, obey God. I kind of feel like we black people have completely disobeyed God. We've completely stopped listening. We read the Bible upside down. We allow people again to manipulate our head, to confuse us. You know how, I, I just feel we're so easily manipulated. First is the other races, then now the so-called pastors and preachers. Because what they do, they look into the Bible and they turn it upside down and they, and they tell us things because we cannot read and we cannot understand or what is wrong with us. We need to look into ourselves. We need to understand that we are not. We are not that image that people see. We're not just image. We are a piece of God. God created us in his image. And God wants the best from us. God wants us to create amazing things to show our time here on earth. He didn't want us to just come through, get angry, get sad, get frustrated, and come back home and say, you know, uh, that journey wasn't worth it. That's not what God expects from us. So, we need to start looking into ourselves. We, know, we need to start improving who we are. I mean, the one that really gets me, really, really gets me, especially in Nigeria. These people, after they've stolen all their money, they steal government money. Then they send their children to the best schools in the world. The best schools that you money can buy, they send their children there. And the children, all these children trained in various parts of the world with all the education that anybody else can have when they come back home 
they never want their hands dirty. Their hands should not be dirty because they were trained abroad. So they sit on the high table and they look for the best jobs. So they carry on the same process. None of that knowledge they went to, to, to learn is ever used. And then the country continues to rot. So if you've taken on all this knowledge, is it not only fair for you to come and use it and put it into practice? No, that doesn't happen. But they must be trained abroad. And then their fathers, instead of thinking, let, let me think how I can make this country better so my children can come back and also contribute or have a decent job or, you know, run a business that makes sense in my country. No. They don't find ways of seeing how they can let the children live abroad. But if we all go abroad, you know, like we're talking about the migrants who are constantly at sea, dying. If we all leave, who's going to live there? Who's going to live in Africa? Because, you know, sometimes I always wonder if this is just a deliberate act to chase all the Africans out so they can take over. Yes, why? Because, like I said, God loves Africa so much that God has put so much in there. There is nothing in that con anywhere in the world that you cannot find there. But you see, what is lacking is the human beings. And this is where we need to look into ourselves. You know, I was telling you the story about Qatar. Qatar realizes the importance of human, importance of human resources. And so now Qatar invests so much money in his people. Now, with all that knowledge, when you, when you know, you know, one of the yastic they use in, you know, deciding if this is a third world country or a second world country, as, as you may want to call it, or, or a developed country, is the ability of the humans to turn things around. And that's what you found in the West. In the West, no matter how things are going, no matter how much they don't have, you know, all these natural resources, they find a way. Most of the foods you buy, are, they, they will tell you it contains, um, there was one I bought today, yogurt, it contains papaya, it contains mango, it contains none of the things in there are any of the things they claim they are. But that is human resource at work. They've been able to manipulate things, even give you the test balls and you think you're eating the real thing, but it is not the real thing. But we in Africa, we sit with the real thing and we don't even know what to do with it. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut this short here. Um, the big message was just for all of us to wake up to this reality that we are more than what anybody out there is thinking of us. Do not give in to all that nonsense, you know, mental, you know, uh, 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 mental slavery, I call it because they want you to feel that something is not right with you everything is right with you you are a piece of god god sent you here with a mission to create a better world to continue his world to make life better for people around you that's why i'm happy to share this message with you so i'm going to thank you so much for being part of us i love you guys so much thank you for all the love hearts i love you i love you and you know There'll be more coming your way with topics like this. Joy Feeder International, I definitely am ready to, to help, to help us. All of us need to wake up and create this momentum that we can change our lives. It starts with our lives. When our lives are changed, everybody's life is changed. So lots of love. See you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye.